Well, good afternoon. It's Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. I am not Jesus. I am not Tim. And I am not in Las Vegas. However, Jesus is everywhere. He is all over the universe. And Tim is actually in Las Vegas, but he has been diagnosed with COVID. So he is staying home or at least suspected of having COVID. And so he is self-isolating. He has a newsletter. If you write to Tracked Man TB, one word, T R A C T M A N T B, like in Tim Barron's, trackmantb at gmail.com and request it, Tim Barron's will send you his newsletter. So that's it. And this is Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas on KKVV AM 1060 in Las Vegas. My name is David Daniels. I'm from Chick Publications. I write Chick tracks, various gospel tracks. For 16 years, I was privileged to write tracks and, and other things with Jack Chick from Chick Publications. And after he passed and went to heaven, I was blessed to be able to write my own along uh, with the illustrator Fred Carter. And so I am praising God that I'm able to do these kind of things because the gospel is the most important thing in the world, is it not? One moment after we die, it won't matter anything else we've done than whether we placed our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. If we don't place faith in Him, if we don't trust Him, if we don't believe on Him, there is nothing left for us. But if we have, even if we've had the worst life possible, Yet there is an eternal life waiting in store for us. But for those of us, like the Bible says, to come early, for those who have come early and we've labored, the Lord has rewards as well. Isn't that awesome? Now, when you walk through your Christian life, do you want to know what God said or do you want to know what people thought? That's the big question, isn't it? When I walked through the occult, I kept on looking for spirit guides and, and getting spiritistic books and trying to find this clarity as I went through all that. But when the Lord brought me out of the occult and brought me back to himself, I needed to know that what he was saying was absolutely true. What a sad thing later on in my life when I found that the teachers that I had in Bible college were saying to me, you can't know exactly what God said. The scholars are doing their best to recover it for you, but only the originals once had it. That's the story. Now, the people who believe the King James Bible is God's preserved words in English, like me now, believe that God kept a promise that he made numerous places. He told us not to add to or take away from his words because he said he would judge us for what we added or took away from his words. And that leaves you with a simple question. Wait a second. If I'm to be judged for adding to or taking away from his words, then don't I have to have the words to know whether I've added to them or taken away from them? And that's the whole point here. Now, for many, many years, from 1611 onward, the, in English, for English speakers, the King James Bible has been a powerful book. And it's an amazing book. It's brought about worldwide revivals. It's brought repentance. It's brought faith. It's brought people back to their roots. Denominations, churches, fellowships were born because people read the words and believed them. That's how important belief is. What if somebody had a plot to destroy those words. And we know there is a devil. Well, if there's a devil, do you think he'd want to leave that just as it is, unaffected? Nobody trying to change it, not trying to modify it? The devil just go, oh, well, that's his book. I'll come up with another one. Or do you think that maybe he'd try to change things? Now, in the years I've worked for Chick Publications, the one well, there's two books that people wanted me to make. The first one I made very early, Did the Catholic Church Give Us the Bible? And that tells the two histories of the Bible, both the stream that goes through Antioch, where the disciples were called Christians first, and the stream that goes down through uh, Alexandria of Egypt. And that was where a lot of perversions and philosophies and everything got into the world and polluted it and made it unfruitful. That's what's happened there. Well, 
guess what? Even with the northern stream, that wonderful stream of Antioch texts from which we get our King James Bible, there were people who wanted to modify it. There are things to think about. APT. A is Antioch. A is Alexandria. There's A. I want to be an apt scholar. I'm remembering it now, APT. So I want to say there's an apostolic, that's Antioch, and there's an apostate, that's Alexandria. Then there's P. The P is for preserved. God preserved his words through Antioch because the disciples were called Christians first, the apostles associated there, and from there the gospel went all over the place. And in Alexandria, it was polluted. It was like a polluted stream. A P T. There are two different things you need to know about the T. One is the text. Now down in Alexandria, the text was polluted. It was distorted. They took out words. They added other words. They just took out entire sections or a number of things like that. But there's another thing. Not just the text. Even if you have the right text, what if you have the wrong translation? What if somebody reteaches the Greek to you? So suddenly salvation isn't something you have. That when you believe in Christ, you have it and you're set for eternal life. But rather, you are going to eternal damnation because you have not trusted his word enough. No, God says his words are life. And he says that if we have him, we have life. But what if your Bible says you don't? What if it says you've got to keep it upright? you got to do everything right or you're not going to get in. You're going to get right up to that point. You thought you did well, but you messed up on something and God won't let you in the door. That's, not, that's what happens when you change a single word, a single tense, a single aspect of a Greek word. It's amazing what they can do. Anyway, the second book that everybody's asked me to write is one on the New King James because the New King James is so similar. I put 10 years of my life into the New King James. I poured myself into it in Bible college, and then I poured myself into it in, a de in the almost decade that I was searching on the Bibles. I was using a New King James at the time, but my faith wasn't strong like it should have been. Only two days after I came back to the, New to the King James Bible from the New King James, I was able to witness to a Jehovah's Witness and his son so strongly that it threatened all the Jehovah's Witnesses around my entire neighborhood. All the women and children left the streets, and all the men got three by seven and did a Jericho march around my property. That's how threatened they were. Two days. Two days. So let me tell you, what's behind the New King James, and why do I call it the Bridge Bible? Let me start from the book itself. Sometimes people wanted me to do an audio book. See what you think of this. Not all bridges are good. Some bridges lead us to evil. It's better that we do not cross those bridges. I'm about to read the first chapter out of New King James the Bridge Bible. This is the Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas show on KKVV AM 1060, also KKVV.com. I was excited to meet Dr. Kurt DeVitro. He was in Garland, Texas in the summer of 2019 when I was speaking on Codex Sinaiticus. Some friends found out that Dr. DeVitro, their beloved preacher friend, would be there, and they really wanted me to meet him. An independent Baptist pastor and teacher for over 40 years, he is known as a strong advocate of the King James Bible, as well as the Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek texts from which it comes. And it seems like he's loved like by everybody. If someone could pry him for the King James, he'd be very influential to get others to make the switch. I wanted to hear from his own lips what happened to him in the late 1970s at a meeting introducing the upcoming New King James Bible. Here's his account, quote, I started a church in New Jersey in 1977, and my dad and I were friends with the owners of the largest independent Christian bookstore east of the Mississippi, Hackman's Bible Bookstore. They sponsored a conference and they brought in a vice president of Thomas Nelson in a pre-publication meeting for the New King James Version. And they showed us a series of film strips and many lectures and ultimately came to this decision. Then he goes on. Now it's been 30 to 40 years, so I'm paraphrasing but being as literal as I can. They said, we're educators here. There were about 300 teachers, pastors, etc. We're educators. 
And we would never admit this to our people or congregations, but we all know that the King James Bible is an inferior translation coming from inferior manuscripts. But every time we've tried to give your people a better Bible, they've just refused to take it. So what we've done is, we've taken the King James Bible and we've revised it as little as we could, changed it here and there to give you, and they use this phrase, a transitional bridge to get your people away from the King James Bible so that ultimately you can move them to a better, more accurate Bible. Dr. DeVitro looked straight at me, then said emphatically, and at that point, I'm done with the New King James. I asked him, what happened after that? What did other people do? He responded. They handed out promotional copies and things. Most of them were no big deal. They took it as it was. I don't know how many were pro-King James people at the meeting. They sat me next to John Kohlenberger's brother to try and provoke me, to provoke an argument between us. And their goal was always to move me to a different Bible. I asked, so John R. Kohlenberger III? The guy who edited the New International Greek English New Testament, Hebrew English Old Testament, his name's all over everything? Right. They put me next to his brother and introduced him. I didn't know who he was at the time, but they were thinking that we'd get into a discussion and they could move me, and it just didn't work, obviously. Then his face clouded as he told me this. I have in my bedroom my mom's Bible, the one she used to wave in my face and say, this is the word of God. Don't you ever let anybody tell you it's not. That's where I stand. The best I can figure it, Kirk was an up-and-coming preacher, and he evidently got someone's attention. That's why he was specifically put next to the famous scholar's brother in an attempt to sway him. When I think about this story, I imagine a guy with a rope lassoing some people, and I see him pulling them over to a bridge. They really don't want to cross that bridge but mysterious forces are compelling them. They hear these comments over and over. You need to be scholarly. You need to be relevant. You need to make it easier. You need to reach the youth. Give them a Bible they can understand. If they don't get it, it's all your fault for giving them a Bible they, can't actu they can actually use. Not giving them a Bible they can actually use. Have you heard these? If you trust the King James, I'll bet you have. The devil has quite a busy public relations department. On that bridge, there are a lot of other Bibles. King James 2, 3, Modern King James, 21st Century King James, American King James, King James Easy Reading, and on and on. They look so similar to the King James. In fact, publishers had to give them another name in order to obtain a copyright for their modified book. The name I give to these Bibles is King James Lookalikes. The guy with the rope has a goal to use the New King James and other King James lookalikes to get the unsuspecting Christian over the bridge to the other side, to modern Bibles like these. The English Revised, 1881, Darby, 1884, Douay Rheims, American Standard, Revised Standard, Bible and Basic English, Moffat, New World, Amplified, New English, Jerusalem, New American Living, New American Standard, NIV, New Jerusalem, International Children's New Century Version, New Revised Standard, I mean, New Revised Standard, sorry, Revised English Bible, Good News, uh, New American Update, uh, NIRV, God's Word, um, CEV, CJB, CSB, ESV, Message, um, all sorts of them, NET, NLT, ISV, CEB, NIV, TEB, Voice Bible, the HNV, and the 2013 Web Bible. Let me say it another way. The New King James is the very essence of a counterfeit. Counterfeit money looks like real money, and yet it's not real money. But it does not advertise that it's not real money. Otherwise, people would know it isn't. They'd know it was a counterfeit, and that would ruin the whole scheme. In the following chapters, you'll see some of the details of this subtle plot. It's not so much that they want to get you to a particular Bible as long as it gets you away from the King James Bible. That's the key. I'll show you why I believe they must eliminate the King James Version. I'll show you how well-meaning Christians were duped to replace the King James with a bridge Bible that only weakens your faith by opening your heart to doubt. 
I will also show you what I've discovered of Satan's plan B, to do what he does best, create doubt in the words of God. He started this strategy in Eden with Adam and Eve, and his aim and his methods have not changed very much over the millennia since. Before I go on, we're almost at the end of the broadcast. This is KKVV AM 1060, also KKVV.com, the Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas show. I'm continuing on. This is David Daniels from Chick Publications, reading a bit out of the New King James, the Bridge Bible. I'm barely in the introduction. The One World Plot. To fully understand the magnitude of the small step toward getting the KGB out of their way, we need only visit the writings of a well-connected occultist, Manly Palmer Hall. I covered his story in detail in vlogs 113 and 147, and in paperback is the world's oldest Bible of fake, 2017. In short, Manly P. Hall was a friend of 33rd Masonic President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and other leaders of what would become the New World Order. His publications during and after World War II exposed the early discussions about a New World Order among the elite. Near the end of World War II, Hall thought there was something wrong with the world. Things had to change. In the spring of 1944, he made a startling statement, quote, To make things right, we will have to undo much of it is cherished error. The problem of revising the Bible shows how difficult it is to do this. For the last hundred years, we've been trying to get out an edition of the Bible that is reasonably correct, but nobody wants it. What's wanted is the good old King James Version, every jot and tittle of it, because most people are convinced that God dictated the Bible to King James in English. End quote. Who's we? Let's take that apart and see what the Sinaiticus might have to do with it and the final destination for that lassoed believer in the King James Bible. By we, it seems Hall is referring to some very high up people in the occult and political world. That was the focus of his 1944 article, Asia in the Balance of the Scales, and with friends like Roosevelt and other leaders, Hall probably felt able to pull it off. Look at these quotes from the same article. Quote, in the next 10 years, we will have to rebuild a world civilization. I hope for some psychologists and even philosophers to be among those appointed to administer this problem. We are thinking now of a world police force. We will first perhaps... Try to make a great world plan. We will sit at a council table and figure out how to iron out the troubles of the earth. And then he explains his plan. The way of that conditioning would be the one used in Central Europe to condition Nazi minds. There the circulation of an ideology began in the public schools. Began with the small child, which is where we'll have to begin. And educate not only our own people, but the peoples of the world. And we'll have, have to have five generations of the consciousness concept of democratic cooperation before we can create a world capable of mental and emotional tolerance. Five generations. What generation are we? Let's count the generations after World War II. 1946 to 64, first generation baby boomers. 1965 to early 80s, second generation, Generation X. Mid 80s to early 2000s, third generation, the millennials are Generation Y. 2004 five or so to now, or the fourth generation, sometimes called Generation Z, or as MTV viewers voted, the founder generation, whatever that's supposed to mean. They actually use the following quote, the founder generation founding a whole new world. If we take this literally, we're possibly just one generation away from a whole new world, along with Manly P. Hall's goal of a people capable of mental and emotional tolerance, excluding only those clinging to their King James Bibles. Is that amazing? That's just the beginning of the beginning of this book. Now, after that, I go, I go into a lot of other points here. I go into the, the history of Thomas Nelson Publishing. How did we get to this point? How did we get to creating the New King James Bible? And then what happened to the publisher, Thomas Nelson? All that is in the book, and you're welcome to see it. It's an e-book. You can do a publisher uh, through Amazon and have it for wherever your local Amazon place is or anywhere in the world and have it sent to you from there. Or you can order it from here, uh, chick.com, www.chick.com. Uh, and it's on, we're online. And also, you can find us uh, on our website. You can go to our page if you want to and, and see all the different things we have, Chick Tracks and Books. I'm going to stop with a prayer for all y'all. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that everyone who listens to this will have be able to have a firm confidence that the Bible they have in their hands is the words of God. 
And I pray that anyone who is not saved will be able to find out that they can find out how to get saved, both in our Chick Tracks that are available online for free, that they can read for themselves, and right there in the words of the King James Bible. I pray, Lord, that you bless everyone here with a good listening ear and a studious heart and those who are saved to get the gospel out to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.